The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship this beautiful second Sunday of Easter. Easter's not over. We celebrate for seven weeks and it is a joy and delight to continue the celebration of our Lord's resurrection together. Special welcome to our guests and visitors. We're glad that you are here and welcome to all who are worshiping online with us as well. We're glad you're a part of this community. In these upcoming weeks, there's always lots going on. Um, a reminder that uh, we do some special things on the first Sunday of the month, and so today we have our food collection. Um, it's our name tag Sunday. We try on the first Sunday of the month to wear name tags. I see two, good job. Um, <laughs> so you're just gonna have to say your names to the people around you. Uh, and then also uh, we send out communion every month to our folks who are homebound and we do a special blessing at the end of, of service for those who will take that uh, communion meal out from our community to other parts of our community far and wide. I want to highlight as well our Earth Day service which is coming up on Sunday April 21st so two weeks from today we'll have a special worship service at 9 45 at Turner Pavilion. And this is, as it says, a community service with seven or eight other congregations in Harrisonburg. And for us, obviously, that falls during our Sunday school hour, and so all of our Sunday school classes will take place there. Ashley will be doing a special children's program, um, and youth and adults, we invite you to participate in the event itself. And then you can also worship here at 8.30 or 11 or make that your primary worship service. Um, but a really wonderful opportunity for us to celebrate God's gift of creation with our whole community. If you have been visiting Muhlenberg and you're interested in learning more, we have a Welcome to Muhlenberg session on Sunday, April 28th. So a few weeks from now, um, no pressure, just come and meet some folks and hear more about what we do. For those who are interested in formal membership, we will have information as well at that event. And we do ask that folks RSVP to that so we can be sure to have enough snacks and things ready to go. Uh, so all that information is in the chimes. Uh, so check that out. And because we do value this community so much, we love to take a minute here at the beginning to stand up and say hi to those around us. So I invite you now to rise, find someone you don't know, and say hi.
Recalling the new life received in the waters of baptism, we rise and face the font as we give thanks for this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Any children, I would love to have you come up here with me, please. Hi, I, you have friends, bring them up. I love your friends. And we're not going to sit down today. I would like you to put your back against a cross. If you would, please. Can you do this one? Right, there you go, you're going to be by mommy. Okay, perfect. Okay, today we're going to talk about one word. And the word is witness. And there are a couple ways to take that meaning, all right? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to witness me doing something, okay? So keep your ears open, keep your eyes open, pay attention to all that's going around, okay? Because you're going to have to recall what I did. Are you ready? Okay. What did I do? I threw an airplane. I. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang on one second. I already had the airplane made, but that's good that you think I can be that quick. I like that. 
thank you for that compliment. But you're right. It was blue paper, and I flew an airplane. It went farther now than it did at 830. So that's even better. Okay, what were you going to tell me? Oh, but that's good, though. I love the way you're thinking. What did you see? Will you go get it for me, please? Will you go get it for me, please? Will you go get it and bring it back to me? Thank you. So when we witness, we are called. I know we've got some attorneys in the room. Yes, perfect. Then keep trying. Keep throwing it. But we have to thank you so much. We have to pay attention to what's going on around us. You knew it was blue, you saw me throw it, and you were willing to tell the truth and be honest. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do. Oh, you know, ooh, should put that in the sermon. Okay, but that's a good idea. All right, so, do, is this true for you? Is this true for you? Is this true for you? It says, I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Yeah, me too. Hold on to that for a second. Can you hold that? What is, I'm sorry, his name. Bennett, sorry, Bennett, I forgot, here we go. Okay, so here's what I would like you to do. The other way of being a witness is to tell people what we love. And when we love Jesus, we wanna tell the stories of Jesus. And a good, easy way when somebody says, oh, I don't know anybody to think about Muhlenberg Lutheran Church. <laughs> Me too, and yes, and when we talk about our church and God and what means something, you, you and me both, absolutely. You'll hear that in my sermon too. So what your job is to take this piece of paper and tell someone else in the church. Do not go to your mother and father or siblings. Well, that's up to you and your parents. I don't care if you throw it in church, but you have to give it to someone Take that, give one to somebody in church today and give that one to somebody else somewhere else. You want another one? Yeah. Spread the word. Take as many as you want. So witness. Witness what, speak the truth about what we see in here and don't be afraid to talk about what we witness. Does that make sense? I'm keeping my airplane. <laughs> Y'all, thank you for coming up. Thank you. Go give it to somebody who's not your mom or dad. Okay? Ben, did you want another one to give away? Okay, go give it to somebody else. Thank you. The first reading is from Acts. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? 
This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to, <clears throat> but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they, take rev they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that was on your feet as a testimony against them. So they, would, so they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of our Lord. I like to say that I'm not old. I've just had a lot of birthdays. Have you ever listened to NPR radio show, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me? Look at this. I love it. I love it. It describes itself as an hour-long quiz program where you can test your knowledge against some of the best and brightest in the news and entertainment world while trying to figure out what's real news and what's made up. When I listen to any of their broadcasts, I have a little anxiety, be, anxiety about all that's going on. At once, I'm laughing, shaking my head, trying to make sense of the questions being asked, and trying to follow the responses, not only to figure out the answers, but to also see if any of those responses are true. We are all so impatient to figure out the answers. And more often than not, when I hear the answer, I'm left with my own, well, I didn't know that. Acts 1 reminds me of, wait, wait, don't tell me. The disciples have questions that they are asking, and we get to follow the responses from Jesus to see if any of it is true. At the end of this story, we are left with our own, wow, oh, I didn't know that. We have wrapped up our time with the Gospel of Mark, and we've moved to the beginning of the early church with the book of Acts. 
our reading begins with a greeting to Theophilus. I wondered who Theophilus was. Turns out the name Theophilus literally means one who loves God. And who is one that loves God? I love God. You love God. This is us. The greeting is to all of us in the community of believers. I love Jesus and you love Jesus and this Jesus story isn't over. So let's find out what's happened. The disciples have gathered together with Jesus after the resurrection and they've got questions. Lord, um, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? They aren't bad questions that they have. At least there's still trust that Jesus' promise of a kingdom will come to fruition somehow. But Jesus replies with, wait, wait, I'm not going to tell you. They are encouraged not to worry about the when and the how of what is to come. They are encouraged to know the promise of the Father, the arrival of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is is coming but not yet you will be my witnesses jesus says before he disappears from their sight it's not a request or a command it's a declaration what does it mean to be a witness i have been witness to many events far too many car accidents reporting someone's behavior verifying a document it's about telling the truth. Being a witness means telling what we saw, describing what we've experienced. What does it look like for you to be a witness in the ways that God has been at work in your life? Can you tell others, and how do you tell others, what you've experienced with the life of faith? We are called to be witnesses to the suffering, rejected, marginalized, victims of war, hard workers, those just barely getting by, the scared, and how the Holy Spirit will work in each of us to bring comfort and or knowledge to each of them. We are to give witness to not knowing of when Jesus will come to us with a message. We do, when we do hear a message, Honor that feeling and the uncertainty of what to do next. The call to give a testimony. We are to use our voices to share the good news, to lift up the weak, and to affirm all people. We are to be in community with each other. Pray on our own, relying on each other, unite together in prayer, then Share words and actions. Respond to those who ask you where your strength comes from. Respond to your inner fear of, how will I get through this? How can we in our daily lives tell, tell people about what we've experienced with God? One morning while I was waiting for the sun to rise on the eastern shore, I encountered a woman who was more talkative than me. There you go. <laughs> I, <laughs> honesty. She had been out walking for quite a while. And when we encountered each other, the first thing she said was, why are you here? I answered like this. Because if this was my opportunity to tell her and for me to share with her, that sunrise is my intentional time. I remember my baptism when my feet touched the water. And as the waves move the sand around my feet, I have to adjust my footing. I also know that as I pray and give thanks for the new day, I will not fall. I am grounded to all that I want to be and how God uses me every day. 
Our conversation continued with her telling me about her struggles and how she knows how to pray, but it's not the thing she chooses to do right away. We got to know each other a little more and never exchanged names. When the time was right, we parted, each of us saying, blessings to you, be safe. An example of a very big, bold, and public way to witness is the person, get ready, get your GPS ready, the person sitting at the crossroads of Market Street, Linda Lane, and Burgess Street. You might better know those as Krispy Kreme, Pizza Hut, El Charo, and the Shell Station. <laughs> you, you got it. This crazy busy intersection often has one witness sitting on a cooler, holding a cross, waving at every vehicle that goes by. And sometimes there's a sign that says, honk if you love Jesus. Smiling with fulfillment that someone honks in approval. And he never makes eye contact with who's ever in the median stopping to talk to him. Because he wants to still see everybody going by and make a connection. He wants to look into the eyes of a stranger. We should talk about God in our lives as the opportunity arises. Most of the time, that's a casual conversation that comes up during chance meetings. Where are you from? Well, I live here in the valley. Where are you from? If anyone responds they're from northern New Jersey, I get really excited. Do you know where Mendham is and the hexagonal church that my dad built? Right, they're supposed to know that. It's in front of the Mendham High School. And I get excited because that's part of my faith story. When in that community as a young child, all six congregations got together for one Bible school that all the kids could do together. I still have that video playing of those memories. Let's take a few seconds and recall a time when you bore witness to what you believe in, when you shared the good news in a way that was or is meaningful to you. Hold on to that. Listen carefully as you are being called into action. Ah, oh, the joys of a real aha moment. And sometimes those aha moments come in unexpected times and places. This past Friday, I joined the Chew on This lunch group. They meet for food and conversation. And at one point, I looked at Pastor Lauren and I said, who decided to the order for the books in the Bible. She responded like this. You know that look. That wonderful, familiar look you get from a teacher or a parent that says, I know I can tell you, and you can read more so you can keep learning and going. Trust me, Lauren had a dead stare in her eye gaze and smile said, Keep going, keep learning, keep understanding this text and what it means to you so you can share it. I'm not sure if that was her intention, but that's what it felt like in the moment and I was thankful for that. Wait, wait, don't tell me. There's more to learn. There's more to see. There's more to tell. There are so many more, wow, I didn't know that, moments to have. Jesus doesn't always give his disciples the answers, but he does give them a promise of the Holy Spirit to lead them faithfully out into the world. And when Jesus ascended and the disciples are all looking up, the two men remind them that they're not called to stand there and look into the heaven but to go out into the world to bear witness to all that Jesus has said and done. Wait, wait, don't tell me 
is my personal way of processing and pulling it together. How I read, the way I read the Bible, the way I listen to sermons, the way I prepare for a sermon, the way I know that practice of prayer and praying is beneficial, and the way I remember those who have gone before me and were God's witnesses to me through their actions. Wait, pray, feel is our way of knowing that the Holy Spirit will come to us despite our impatience. The way I will forever remember to wait, knowing that I am a baptized child of God. Knowing that I am baptized with water and the Holy Spirit. And when it is my time to share, I know what to do. May your minutes, hours, and days be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you can go and share the good news. Be witness to the teachings of God. Amen. Let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the God, the God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He is seated in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O oh God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed, and we become witnesses to your love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide the leaders of our nation and the leaders of the world to govern with justice and mercy and to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may live in fear. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your children cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and all forms of oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those who grieve, especially the families of K. Roy Nielsen, Doug Price, and Joan Strickler. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and others who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. We pray for our pastors, Lauren and Alex, for our bishops, Milton and Eaton, for our lay preachers, especially Christy today, for our lay communion ministers, for our congregation leaders and teachers, and for all who serve in worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. Today, we pray especially for these members of our congregation, Roger and Gus Cagey, Bill, Jody, and Andrew Keller, Mary Pat Kessiger, Charlie and Sherry King, Bryce and Ansley Kaiser. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O oh God, for the lives of those who now rest in you, especially Dietrich Bonhoeffer and all those whose lives have been given in faithfulness to the gospel. Grant us your peace, merciful God, receive our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We greet one another with the sign of Christ's peace.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, invites us to this table. Alleluia. Come to the feast. You may be seated. For those worshiping online, I invite you to take the bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. And the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. O God of tender compassion, as you healed the sick and welcomed the stranger, bless those who leave this assembly to share the gifts of this table with our sisters and brothers who are sick and homebound. May they be sustained by the love and prayers of this community and by the bread of life that satisfies all hunger. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. We have been renewed at the wellspring of God's grace. Now go in peace to live out God's love. We go to be open, authentic, relational, serving. Thanks be to God.